Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast this uh, beautiful Thursday morning here on, of course, uh, Plus TV Africa. I am Usaugi Ogmoa. A couple of trending stories that we're beginning the uh, program with this morning. The presidency, of course, uh, and the political state government have uh, reacted to the killings in Plateau State. First of all, the governor of Plateau State has, um, you know, it reimposed a curfew on the uh, just north local government after 36 or 35 people were reportedly killed and houses burnt in uh, that local government area. And, and that's uh, very likely what we are starting discussions with this morning. And also uh, this morning, the presidency has also released a statement on the Nigerian Defense Academy. Uh, it has, of course, uh, stated that, you know, from, of course, news reports, that, um, you know, a couple of uh, these incidents might happen to spur the military to take an action to completely rid the country of insurgent groups. And that's uh, one of the reactions from President Muhammadu Buhari's uh, spokespersons um, with regards to killings in the Nigerian Defense Academy, which took place uh, about 48 hours ago. And of course, uh, this morning we will also be looking at the papers this morning to share with you some of the major stories making headlines across the country uh, this uh, Thursday morning here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And thanks for joining us. 36 key, uh, people have been killed in a new attack on Yewa Zagam community of Plateau State. Locals, of course, are tired of the killings and took some of the corpses to the state uh, government house. And uh, in reaction, Governor Simon Along reimposed a 24-hour curfew on Joss North. Um, I'm going to start with that one. You know, it's a, it's a pretty, you know, shocking story. Um, and a lot of people have, of course, been reacting to this. It's, you know, a sadness mostly um, across the whole country with reactions to the killings in Jaws. And mostly because of where this is all coming from. And, you know, we, we've, in the past, you know, maybe decades ago, you know, sometime in the 2000s, seen major crisis in Jaws that a lot of Nigerians had said they never want to relieve. A lot of people, of course, had to evacuate them themselves had to run away from you know the plateau state uh, to ensure that they never get to experience that again that was in the 2000s now we are in 2021 and once again there seems to be another um, set of these uh, killings going on in uh, plateau state uh, the biggest question for many nigerians and of course that is to the nigerian government is to identify those who are responsible for these killings um, what exactly is the, you know, the, the, you know, the catalyst that has set up these killings once again? Not long ago, reported about 20 travelers were killed. Um, what was reported as a reprisal attack? And of course, this is also coming from attacks in villages in the Irigwe community, where, where of course, on Plus TV Africa here, we had also interviewed a couple of people uh, to get some truth into what exactly was going on. But one of the challenges that I believe that Nigeria is currently dealing with is lack of clarity with regard to some of these issues. What exactly is going on in different parts of the country? The news media and of course the government has continued to describe these as either unknown gunmen or as a farmer's head as clash or you know as uh, community clashes but you know until we get some clarity and we understand exactly what exactly is going on it may never you know be solved and we may continue to see these things happen every now and then. The uh, Plateau State Governor Simon Lalong has imposed a curfew, a 24-hour curfew in just north. But bear in mind that this isn't the first curfew. You know, there was a curfew and it was while this curfew was in place that these killings took place. And so questions will definitely be directed to security agencies to answer what exactly um, made it still possible for 35 or 36 lives to be lost and houses burnt while a curfew was imposed. And what is the benefit and what exactly do um, people get to gain from imposing a curfew? What does the state government hope that it will achieve from imposing a curfew on just north? Where has the military failed? Where has Nigeria security agencies completely failed to address some of these issues? And who will be made to answer these questions? For too long now, we've continued to live in this same space where nobody gets to be blamed, nobody gets to be fired, nobody gets to be court-martialed, nobody gets to you know, really answer questions because they failed 
If 35 lives are lost, it is because there may be or very likely were distress calls put out that there was no response to. If 35 lives were lost, it is maybe because the military or the security agencies don't have a proper response time to some of these attacks. And the next question will be, what happens next after 35 lives, uh, lives are lost? And you may want to go back to other incidents where lives have also been taken by these elements. Because we still aren't 100% sure who is responsible for these killings or what exactly is leading to these killings. And so what happens next after these you know, incidents take place? This very, very sad and shocking incidents take place in Nigeria. What do you expect should happen next? Who would you expect will be arrested? Who do you think will be prosecuted? Which questions will be asked across the communities? And who is not being honest with the Nigerian society and the Nigerian people um, in general? Um, what more does the Plateau State Governor need to do? And it's a great thing that we're having a conversation on the breakfast this morning, a major conversation with um, persons from the Plateau State Government to address some and ask some of all these questions. How is it that in Nigeria in 2021, I want you to listen to that again. In 2021, we're having state governors send buses to pick up students from the University of Joss. How do we have a situation like that in 2021 that people are being sent back home or being rescued from the University of Joss and sent back home? I'm not even talking about the communities now. I'm talking about the University of Joss. We've seen, you know, even the Enugu state government sending a bus to get its, you know, Enugu State um, indigents from the University of, of Joss back home. How has Plateau State and how has Nigeria found itself in this type of situation in 2021? And in a situation like this, you would also expect that there will be, you know, statements from the presidency. There will be at least, you know, a body language from the president that shows you know, you know, the severity of the, this incident and shows how sad and how urgent the presidency needs to take steps to ensure that they fix these things. Governor Simon Lalong in the news also went, you know, to Aso Rock to meet with President Muhammadu Buhari to, you know, appeal for assistance for those living in IDP camps. How are we in a situation like this in Nigeria today? And should that really be the response of a governor? I mean, there's some of the questions that I will be asking. Should that be the response of a governor? After lives, dozens of lives, hundreds of lives have been lost in his state, he goes to Abuja to meet with the president to appeal for assistance for those living in IDP camps. First of all, the governor should be able to um, you know, completely take care of every single individual living in an IDP camp in Plateau State. And when he has to go to Abuja to ask for assistance, then what exactly is he doing as a governor of a state? I mean, in what way has he been able to take steps to also protect the people of the state? And once again, who will be fired? Who will be, you know, be asked questions? Who exactly will be made to pay for these things? If you remember, after the killing of 20 um, travelers uh, a few weeks ago, there were reports a couple of people were arrested. The criminal justice system has also failed to prosecute anybody, and we've not been able to see anybody, you know, to the full extent of the law, prosecuted for, prosecuted for these killings. And that's one of the reasons, and I've said this on this platform multiple times, that that is one of the reasons these you know, you know, atrocities may never end. Because there is no actual criminal justice system that puts its foot down on these killings and ensures that it never happens again. We have a huge problem in our hands in Nigeria. And, of course, it's going to lead us into our next you know, conversation, where, of course, the Nigerian military has set up an inquiry into the attack on the Nigerian Defense Academy. It also came as a shock as we started the week uh, where we heard that about you know, three um, uh, military officers were killed in an attack on the Nigerian Defense Academy in Kaduna. We spoke about this yesterday, shared you know, the di distance between the Nigerian Defense Academy and the Nigerian Air Force, Air Force Base in Kaduna State. And you know, different details here and there why this is such a shocking incident in Nigeria. But of course, it's not shocking to a lot of people because it's not the first time we're hearing, hearing of uh, incidents like this. It's not also the first time that we've heard, you know, of our army base being attacked, of soldiers being killed. Um, what was the response of the government in the past? And what would you expect to be the response of the government this time? Um, there's people who have tried to pull in the tribal and, you know, the regional uh, card in some of all of this and ask, you know, what would have happened if this happened in a different part of the country? But let's not go that far. 
The president, according to the news, is saying that this would spur and it would you know, push the Nigerian military to ensure that they you know, take better actions against the, you know, the, these insurgents and these bandits and these criminals, whoever they are. But the questions will still remain, was this an inside job? How did this happen? How was the NDA breached so easily? How did these people manage to get out, you know, after taking, you know, after, you know, carrying out this attack? How did they, you know, find their way out of that, you know, uh, location in Kaduna State and still have not been arrested, still have not been, you know, prosecuted? These are very, very important questions. And I've always always spoken about the body language of the Nigerian government and body language of Nigerian president. I've spoken over and over about some level of, you know, PR that at least helps the situation. It may not save, save those lives immediately, but at least it might, you know, save lives in the future, or it might at least show a government that is entirely concerned. When you put out a statement like, oh, the person who was meant to be manning the CCTV slept off, or when you put out a statement saying that, you know, that, you know, this attack would spur, you know, those who, you know, or the military to take action, it, it, it sounds to a lot of Nigerians like an insult to those who, who lost their lives. So once again, the question will be, what happens next? And there's also been statements that I've seen in the media saying that this, you know, was maybe an inside job to embarrass the president. This, of course, is the biggest embarrassment for me, putting out a statement like that and, you know, making these type of claims is the biggest embarrassment after all of these incidents. What would you expect from a government? Imagine that in the UK, some elements attacked, you know, the, you know um, UK um, military officers. Imagine that in the United States, you know, army officers or, you know, army you know, veterans, whoever they are, um, were Marines were attacked in their barracks. I, I want you to have just, just an imagination of what you know, would be taking place right now if they would have been arrested by now. If the president, you know, Joe Biden, Donald Trump, whichever one of them, what you, know, you would expect from him at a time like this. It doesn't in any way look good to see that President Muhammadu Buhari has not been able to show, express you know, the type of personality that feels completely saddened and, and, and distraught by some of all these killings. It also doesn't help when you know, some of his uh, press men and you know, um, um, publicity persons make these type of statements. It's not in, in any way you know, about the president at this time. It's about the lives that have been lost in different parts of the country. It has nothing to do with embarrassing the president or has nothing to do with you know, making the president look bad. Has, that's the, the least important thing. If you put together a list of 1,000 things that are important at this time, that would not even make the list. And so the lives of those officers are the most important and protecting every single Nigerian life. And yesterday we tried to speak about... Um, what this means and you know what this really tells about the boldness of some of these criminal elements whoever they are and it, it doesn't paint a really really good picture with regards to nigerian lives so what would you expect to happen next after a situation like this who would you expect to take you know the, the blame for a situation like this who would you expect you know to take action after a situation like this and how can the nigerian government still continue to you know tell the nigerian people that they still aren't 100% sure who carried out these attacks or how they can be apprehended. It's not very difficult. And I'm sure that you know that if the DSS wants to find a person in Nigeria, they will find you, regardless of how long it takes or how hard you try you know, to hide. They will find you. The, you know, the DIA, some of all those security agencies, military intelligence, they will find you. It's, very, it's actually pretty easy for them to locate any single person. So why is it so difficult for them to find the leaders of these militant groups? Why is it so difficult for them to prosecute those who have carried out these attacks in the past and have been arrested? Why is it so difficult for the criminal justice system to ensure that they, you know, they, they show Nigerians and they show these criminal elements that you don't mess with the Nigerian government on this level and expect to go scot-free? These are very, very big questions. We hope that we'll be able to you know, speak a lot more about some of all these things uh, this morning on The Breakfast. In a bit, we're going to be joined by our guest for Off the Press, uh, Mr. Isaac Elnyai, talk as a public affairs analyst, to share his thoughts on some of the major stories making uh, the headlines across Nigeria today. With that, I say good morning once again. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast, and let's have a an, an very interesting uh, next two hours.